Hey, what's up? The Cabinet Vision Guy here with a quick little video about adding some 3D hardware to Cabinet Vision to give your cabinet objects a little more polish. So to go ahead and show off what I'm talking about, I'm going to start a new job, place a wall, and then place a drawer stack on that wall. Now I'm going to just go into the cabinet and clear out the existing drawers and put in three new ones. Now you can see over here on the sidebar that I have a parameter called add metal file brackets. It's a boolean parameter and it's set to false. If we change it to true, we get a couple of new parameters. The file bar adjustment, the file hanger inset, and the file hanger spacing. These parameters are created by a UCS and allow me to adjust some of the hanger pieces that another UCS places on my drawer box sides. Let's change the inset to 1 and the spacing to 16, just for now. Now let's move over to the 3D viewport. As I move the cabinet around, you can see some of the new parts that are there. Let me open the bottom drawer up so you can see the rendered view of these new parts. If I zoom in on one of my brackets, you can see what's being placed. Each length here actually has three parts, two brackets and one bar that fits along the width of the drawer box. Right now, it's placing the hangers on all three drawers. Well, I know that the top drawer isn't deep enough to accept the hanging file folder, so I can just open the object tree, find the first drawer opening in the list, and then change the underscore drop file hangers from zero to one. Now the top drawer doesn't have any of those parts added anymore. Now my favorite part about this is that I have these parts added so they will show up in my reports and if I want can show up in my bid center as well. But you know what, enough about that for now. Let's see how I actually made these parts. I'm switching over to my Mac as that's where I have SketchUp installed, which is what I use to make these parts. Let me delete this person here and OK. To start, I want my camera menu and then the standard views menu and finally select the front view. Now I can start drawing the shapes that I need. To start with, let's put a rectangle uh, with the dimensions of 2 inches by 1 inches, which gives us this nice little rectangle here for use. And now I need to draw some guides to make the proper shape. I want the material thickness to be 1 16th of an inch, so I will draw the outline guides for that. Uh, this guide needs to be where the bracket holds onto the sides, so it needs to be 3 quarters of an inch. And I can then place the final guides. Once those are placed, I just use the line tool to draw the outline that I need. Finally, I can delete all of those lines that I don't need and I have the main shape that I want. I can then just use the push-pull tool to make it a 2 inch wide bracket. Next I have to put the support walls up on this side. Again, we use some guides and I want the groove to be a quarter of an inch wide so I place the guides from the center of the part uh, out an eighth of an inch then the material is still uh, 1 16th of an inch, so I need two more guides, and now I can just grab the line tool. Once those lines are drawn, I return to the push-pull tool and pull those uh, little support walls out to the same height as the top of the bracket, and voila, the bracket is done. I would just save the bracket to a location the cabinet vision can see, and I'm done. Since I already have one made, I'm going to just close this window and open up a new one. Now the bar has to be made. Uh, this is a really simple one to do. Once again, we go to the front view and draw a rectangle. This time it should be 1 quarter inch wide by 3 quarter inches tall. Now we just go to our circle tool and draw a circle starting from the center of the top line of the rectangle to the outside of that line, like so. We do the same for the bottom, and finally we delete the extra lines. Once again, we use the push-pull tool to draw it out, and we only want it to be about an inch, so I will type that in and done. Since Cabinet Vision will be changing the length of this object, we aren't going to worry about the length as it is inside of SketchUp. All we really need to do now is import the SketchUp files into Cabinet Vision and we can place them where we need them. Honestly, I actually did a whole lot more than that though. I went ahead and created a whole new part in my part catalog, two new materials, imported the part into Cabinet Vision and finally placed it in my library so the UCSs can place them. I don't really want to go over all of those steps in this video, but I will pass out a setup package that will contain all of those items with a fully annotated UCS that you can take a look at to see what I did to get these things done. I hope this really helps you out in uh, getting started on making all kinds of 3D objects that you can use to enhance all of your renderings for cabinet vision.